saints, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Rayma Faith Center International in Casa. Psalm 23 reminds us that the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. Even in these times, whatever we need, He is found. We just need to put our trust in Him. We read our daily devotional message as it's written by Dr. R.J. Singh, the senior pastor and founder of Faith Center International Ministries, South Africa. It's titled, Faith to Live By. The reading is taken from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. It reads thus, Behold, his soul which lifts up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. About six centuries before the Christian era, God gave the prophet Habakkuk a revelation that was provided the basis of the gospel. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. That's taken from the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. So accurately does this prophecy express the central theme of the Christian message that is actually stated three times in the New Testament. Let us now look at these scriptures because this is the only basis to please God, and that is faith. That's the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 17 states, This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. That's from the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. So it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scripture says, it is through faith that the righteous person has life. The righteous man shall live by faith. This is not an ordinary life that we live in. Scripture reveals there is another kind of life, a life of righteousness that has its source in God alone. The only way that anyone can receive this kind of life is by faith in Jesus Christ. In his gospel, the gospel of John continually focused on his divine eternal life. In him was life. That's from the book of John chapter 1 verse 4. A life in Christ is a pre present reality, not just a future hope. So, there is a divine eternal life that has its source in God alone. And God has made, has made this life available to us in Christ Jesus. Our declaration of faith states, Lord, teach me to be strong and faithful in my love for you and your church in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please get your Bible, your notebook, and your pen and get ready to receive the word of God as we receive it from Pastor Ricardo. Be blessed. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our program this morning. It is so Good to have you join us. Thank you for fellowshipping with us this morning and during this time. It's really an honor and a privilege to have you in our lives and to connect with you. Now, this morning, before I go into the Word of God, I'd like to just open up in a brief word of prayer. So if we can just bow our heads as we just pray for God's wisdom. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, for your precious Word. We thank you, O oh God, that we have an opportunity yet again, Father God, to read your word, study your word, meditate on your word, and to hear your word, Father. I pray in Jesus' blessed name, Father, for everybody that is under the influence of this telecast, everybody that is under the influence of my voice, O oh God. I pray that the word of God will come forth with clarity, O oh God, and soundness, O oh Lord, unhindered, and un Lord God, undisturbed from every satanic maneuverment and strategy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, O oh God, that by reading your word, Father, we receive faith, and I pray for spiritual understanding, enlightenment, and wisdom, O oh God, as we share your word this morning. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. And God's people said, Amen, Amen, and 
Amen. Praise God. Wow. This morning, I want to share with you on the subject of the power of believing. It is so important that you believe because what you believe is what you eventually receive. You know, God is in no way trying to withhold stuff from us. God, in fact, wants to get stuff to us. But we have a responsibility on our side to believe. The responsibility is believing, and that is where the power is in. If we can open up as a, a foundational scripture to St. Mark's Gospel, and chapter number 4, as I'm going to share from there, um, from verse number 20. Now, this is the account where Jesus, you know, was hungry, and he cursed the fig tree. And now the next day, picking up from verse 20, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to Jesus, Rabbi, which means teacher, look. So Peter was astonished. Through walking with Jesus, he heard the words of Jesus. He heard when Jesus rebuked that tree. And now the very next day, they're walking past the same direction. And uh, Peter looks and he sees the tree. And to his amazement, this fig tree is dried up, it's withered overnight, purely by the word of God. And P Peter's astonished. He says, Rabbi, teacher, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Our Jesus is the teacher. In this time, he was walking with his disciples. In all that time, he was teaching them. And it's the same with you and I in our daily walk with the Lord Jesus. Every day, he's the great teacher. That's why you've got to spend time with Jesus so that he can teach you. Hallelujah. He can teach you his ways. He can teach you his precepts. Praise God. Now, Peter's astonished. He says, Rabbi, teacher, look, the, the fig tree you cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered and he says to all his disciples, this is a lesson now. He says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Wycliffe's Bible translation says, have ye the faith of God. In other words, have the God kind of faith. Have, have God's faith. In other words, the faith that spoke those words that brought creation into existence. Have faith. Have that type of faith. For assuredly, I say to you, who ever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. In other words, there's no qualification. This is, this is for everybody, everybody and anybody that will say and will believe and not doubt. Because to doubt in the context that we read it here in, um, in Mark's gospel, um, it means to separate oneself from. In other words, to separate yourself from what you said. It means to withdraw yourself from what you said. It means to discriminate. It means to oppose. In other words, what you believe and what you speak must run in line with each other. Hallelujah. So he says, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt, but believe that what he says will be done, will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. So my believing and my speaking have everything to do with what I receive. In verse 24, Jesus says, therefore, I say to you, Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them. In other words, when you pray, believe that you receive them. Because it's very easy. You can say, yes, I've prayed. I've prayed about it. But the thing is, do you actually believe that what you prayed, you have the answer for what you prayed for? So believing is very, very powerful because it has everything to do with what you say and it has everything to do with what you pray for. In the book of Job, Job chapter 22, verse 28, the Bible says, 
you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. In other words, you'll speak and it, it shall come into existence. But it will come into existence, as Jesus says here, by you believing. So you have to believe. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 tells us to guard our hearts with all diligence. Keep a guard, keep a watch, set a watch over your heart. For out of your heart flow the issues of life. Everything that happens in your life comes from your heart. Let me show you something in Mark's gospel chapter number 4. Say in Mark's gospel chapter 4 and I want to read verse number 24. To verse 25. Then Jesus said to them, Take heed. In other words, be careful what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken from him. In other words, friends, God gives you what you believe him for. That is what Jesus is saying. In accordance with what you believe in God for, God will give you that. He'll give you in accordance with what you believe him for. It is through our revelation of the truth of God's word and our revelation of God himself that we allow God to transfer into our lives whatever we believe Him for. So you've got to have a revelation that God is the God who heals you for you to be healed. You've got to have, you've got to have that belief and that revelation that God wants you well. He wants you healthy. Amen. And God will heal you. He gives you in accordance with what you believe Him for. So that's the first point I want to make this morning is that, you know, faith, uh, uh, believing rather, believing begins in the heart. Believing and faith are interconnected. Faith, coming from the Greek word pistis, which means to have a strong conviction. It's a strong conviction of truth. Believing, on the other hand, is a Greek word, pisteo. Pisteo means, it means to trust. It means to have confidence in. It means to be persuaded. Hallelujah. That's what it means to believe, that I'm persuaded that what I say, it will come to pass. I'm persuaded that what I pray for, I will receive. I'm persuaded that everything God has said, is true. And I'm not going to debate about it because the minute I debate about it, I'm beginning to doubt. I'm on the wrong side of the fence. So I've got to believe what God says. So that's the first point. Believing starts in your heart. In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 11, chapter 12. Matthew 12. Praise God for His precious word. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 12. And I want to read verse number 34. Verse 34. Jesus says this. He says, Brood of, vip brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You see that? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it all comes from your heart. Whatever your heart is full of, you, it, it will come out through your mouth. If your heart is full of fear, you'll always be speaking fear. If your heart is full of, you know, you're just thinking poor all the time, you're going to always be speaking, uh, speaking poor. But God doesn't want it to be so. God wants to enrich you with all His goodness. Praise God. The second point I want to make is that before you confess or pray, you must be you must believe because I can be praying, but I'm praying from fear. If you pray in fear, you're never going to receive. If you're confessing the word of God in fear or in doubt, you're never going to receive. You must believe. So before you can confess the word, before you can pray, you've got to believe. Have it, have it in your heart that God is going to answer it. God is going to bring it to pass. God will cause it to manifest. The third point 
that I'd like to make this morning is that all things are possible to him who believes. All things. And you, you've got to believe that in Mark's Gospel, chapter number 9, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, and I want to read verse number 23. But let's just go from verse 21. This is a man who brought his son to Jesus, and his son had a mute spirit. And he says to Jesus, I brought him to your disciples and nothing happened. Now Jesus asks him in verse 21, he says, um, how long has this been happening to him? Because this mute spirit would often, you know, cause him to uh, throw himself into the fire and throw himself into the water. In other words, this, this spirit wanted to, wanted to kill him, wanted him dead. So Jesus asked, how long has this been happening to him? And the father answers, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. You understand? If you feel that you're in that position this morning where you're finding it difficult to believe God, you can ask the Holy Spirit, ask God to help you to come out of unbelief. Amen. Ask Him to help you. So all things are possible to Him who believes. So whatever it is, you may think, no, this thing is not possible. How can this thing be? It is possible. If you can just believe it, you can receive it according to the Word of God. The fourth point I want to make is that believing will cause you to see the glory of God. If you want to see the glory of God in anything in your life, you've got to believe God. In John's Gospel, chapter number 11, praise God, John's Gospel 11, and I want to read verse number 40. Praise God. Now, this, well, watch what Jesus says to Martha in verse 40. Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? You see that? If you'd believe, you'd see the glory of God. It doesn't matter what it was. Listen, Lazarus was dead. And Jesus just said, just believe. We find in verse number 11, uh, the latter part, Jesus says to his, to his disciples, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him. Then his disciples said to him, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, and they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in his sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad, watch here, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. So that means there was some form of unbelief in the disciples. Because Jesus says, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Are you a Thomas this morning? I pray that God would deliver you from that spirit of unbelief. Then Thomas, who's called a twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. You see, that, that's the Thomas type of faith. He says, let us go die. Why? Because in verse 8, the disciples said to him, Teacher, Jesus, uh, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. Are you going there again? They tried to kill you there. Are you going there again? And what does Thomas say? Ah, let us go die with him. So that, that, that is the Thomas type of faith. The Thomas type of faith, um, the Thomas type of believing is that unless I see and unless I can put my hand on it, I will not believe. But Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So it's more blessed to not see and just believe. So the believing works with not seeing and just believing. I don't have to see it to believe it. Praise God. I just know in my knower, I know in my spirit that it is true. Amen. So believe what God says to you this morning. 
So you see the glory of God when you believe. All that God, the Lord does not ask us to reason. He does not ask us to figure it out. He does not ask us to calculate it. All he asks is simply that we would just believe. Watch in Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, and I want to read verse 36. This is Jairus, uh, one of the leaders of the synagogue who came to Jesus. His daughter was not well. And he says to Jesus, come lay your hands on my daughter. And Jesus says, okay, I'll come. And then we find that whilst uh, um, Jesus was speaking to the woman that had just been healed, the issue of blood, the people from Jairus' house come to Jairus and say, it's too late. Your daughter's dead already, gone, forgotten. And as soon as Je Jesus heard the word, verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard what these people had to say, he said to Jairus, he said to Jairus, do not be afraid, only believe. So all he wants is that you just believe. And he permitted, watch, he permitted no one to go with him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. I want you to highlight that. Jesus permitted nobody except those three. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a, uh, a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, watch, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, I want you to highlight that. When he had put them all outside, he took the father, he took them and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. You see, that's the thing with believing. You've got to put out every source of unbelief from your circle. You've got to associate with people who believe. Because there's great power in agreement. The Bible says, if two shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be established. So you want to get all unbelievers, all, all people who do not believe. Put them out of the room. That's what Jesus did. He put them all out of the room. And he takes with him his disciples and the mother and the father of the child. Because he spoke to the father. The father came to him in faith. And he says to the father, he says, do not be afraid, only believe. That is, don't take thought of what they have said concerning your daughter. Just believe. So Jesus knew the father had faith for his daughter. And that faith was the faith he'd used to raise her from the dead. So he takes the father and the mother with his disciples, goes into where the child was lying, and he took her, verse 41, he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately, the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. You see that? So Jesus spoke. Arise. When he got to the tomb of Lazarus, what did he do? He spoke. Lazarus. Lazarus came forth. Hallelujah. And Jesus, if you read John's Gospel, chapter number 12, Jesus even prays to the Father. He says, for this reason, this is why I said it, that they may believe. And then he speaks and says, Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. So you've got to know that God hears you when you pray. You've got to know that God hears you when you speak. And God will honor. He will honor your prayer. He will honor your word. If you'll just believe, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Believing, the first point is, believing is the power to conceive in order to receive. So in order to receive, you've got to conceive something. Let's just see something in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. So believing is the power to conceive in order for you to receive. So there's got to be a conception. In Luke, chapter 1, verse 38, this is Mary. Mary, Mary says to the angel, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Remember when the angel started speaking and he told Mary that you'll be with child. And Mary says, but how can this be? You know, I, I, I have not known men. I've never 
complain with any man. I am a virgin. I, I mean, that is, that, is, that is something unheard of. And then the angel speaks to her and tells her how the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her. And then she says, Behold, behold, see the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. In other words, what you said, I'm ready to receive it. So as I, as, I, as I receive it, as I open my heart, I receive it. Conception takes place and I receive what, what, what was spoken. Verse 45, watch what Elizabeth says, the mother of John the Baptist. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Hallelujah. So, in believing, you are blessed. Amen. And as long as you believe, believing puts you into a position of blessedness, because whatever was spoken to you of the Lord, it will come to pass. So believing is the power to conceive in order for you to receive. Praise God. And the sixth point is believing makes great power available to the believer. There's great power that's available to you and I. In the book of Ephesians chapter number 1, um, verse 19, Paul says, What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? In other words, there's a power that works in the life of a believer. He says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Amen. Hallelujah. According to the working of his mighty power. If we go on to chapter number 3 and we read verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly. He's the God of the possible. To him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think, according to the power that works in us. See that? God will do according to the power that works in you. And that's the power of his word. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of believing. That's the power of faith. Praise God. So in believing, Great power is made available to you. Great power is at your disposal to work the impossible, the unthinkable, and the unimaginable. That is what God will do for you through your believing. And the seventh thing that believing does, believing does not compromise. Believing makes no room for compromise because it positions you far over your circumstances. In the book of Daniel chapter 3, we learn from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew boys, that refused. They refused to compromise their God. They refused to compromise the faith that they had in their God. They didn't bow to any of the gods in Babylon. They refused because they knew there's only one true God whom they serve, and they were faithful to their God. And, and the king said, you know that because you are not bowing, we're going to throw you into the fiery furnace. We're going to throw you into the fire. And they said, well, then so be it. <laughs> Our God is able to deliver us from it. He's able to deliver us from the fire. And even if he doesn't, we still his. We still belong to him. That's what Paul said. Whether we live, whether we die, we belong to the Lord. So believing does not compromise. These Hebrew boys refuse to compromise. When we read in Luke's Gospel, chapter number 8, and from verses 11 through to 15, we read about the parable of the sea. And we see there how there are people, there are those who believe for just a small while. And then Satan comes, he steals the word, and then the word becomes of no avail to them. It's of no use to them. But there are those who believe and hold fast to the end. So you've got to hold fast to the end with your believing. Don't, don't mix your faith. Don't mix your believing. Don't compromise it. Because the minute you compromise it, you choke it. It's like those weeds that choke the word. Don't be concerned with the cares of the world. Everything that everybody's worried about in the world, don't concern yourself about it. Yes, those things are there. You know what? This word, this word, the word of God, this is, this is my newspaper. It doesn't just have yesterday's news. It doesn't just have today's news. But it's got tomorrow's news too. 
So whatever happens around me does not move me because it's in the word of God. And all I got to do is just trust God and hold fast to his word. I'm not going to taint my believing with unbelief because of everybody that doesn't believe. Hallelujah. So don't compromise your believing. Believing does not compromise. If you want to see the word of God working in your life, then stop compromising. Don't compromise the word of God. You know, we learn from school that don't count your chickens before they hatch. Hallelujah. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. And don't carry all your eggs in one basket. That is what they teach us. But the Bible teaches us, I call those things which be not as though they are. So I can count my chickens before my eggs hatch. Amen. And I can trust God with my entire life because He is my Creator. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't go by what the world is saying because the world says it, it sounds good enough so I'm going to believe it. No, I'm not going to believe it because the Bible tells me that there are those who have a form of godliness but they deny the power of God. So don't compromise the word of God. Don't compromise your belief. Stand up for what you believe in. Stand up for the word of God. That's the truth that you go by. And lastly, believing promotes you. It prompts you and promotes you to take giant leaps of faith. Look at Abraham. Abraham didn't have a son. He never had children. Yet the first son that God blesses him with, God tells him, listen, take your son. I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac. And I want you to go and offer him as a sacrifice to me. Abraham, he believed God. The book of James says that Abraham believed God. It was accounted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. When you have a friend, listen, I'd rather be friends with God than be friends with the world. Because the world will throw you away. The world, the, the world will never stand with you. But God will always stand with you. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Hallelujah. And that is the God that we serve. So when you have, when you are friends with God, that's the best friend you could ever have in your life as God, Jesus. He opens doors no man can close. And if there are no doors, you'll walk through the walls. There are no limitations without God. So take the limitations off today by believing what God says. Believing the word of God. And what you believe is what you will stand on. Because your, your believing is the foundation of your life. And ultimately sets the course and the direction in which your life will take. So I trust that you've been blessed by the word of God this morning. And I want to encourage you. Please. Have faith in God. Lay aside. Bury all your worries today. Bury your anxieties. Bury all unbelief. Bury all doubt. Get rid of all doubt. All sources of doubt. People that speak doubt and unbelief into your life. Cut yourself off from that today. And connect yourself with people of faith. So that you can grow your faith. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, before we close, if you haven't made the Lord Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, I want to take this opportunity and I want to encourage you to receive Jesus into your life this morning as we pray the simple prayer of faith this morning. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, just say after me, I come to you, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And I confess my sin. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to cleanse me from all sin and unrighteousness by your precious blood. I receive, Lord Jesus, your free gift of eternal life right now. According to the word of God, if I shall confess you, Lord Jesus, with my mouth and believe in all of my heart that God raised you from the dead, I shall be saved. So right now, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. I receive you into my heart. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe that from this moment on, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I have a new spirit now, a renewed spirit. And I ask you, Jesus, to fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
And I thank you now in your precious name. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, I want to encourage you uh, to find a church in your local area. Connect with a church where you can grow your faith and you can really grow in the Lord. And um, uh, write to us, email us, um, send us a WhatsApp. The details are on the screen. Um, we would like to send you a love gift to help you to grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, before we go, I just release the blessing. You stretch your hands towards the screen. The Lord bless you, child of God. The Lord keep you in the palm of his hands. The Lord God of heaven and earth cause his face to shine upon you, his servant. Upon the works of your hands, the Lord God of heaven pour out from his heaven the rivers of his grace and blessing upon you. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, the Ancient of Days, cause the glory of His presence to be upon you, His child, upon your house, upon your home, upon your heart, upon your life. The Lord give to you the fullness of His shalom peace, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of His love, in the name above every name, in the name of Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the light of this world, the glory of Israel, and the lion of the tribe of Judah. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying, God bless you. We love you very much. We love to hear from you. Write to us and um, tell us all the wonderful things that the Lord is doing in your life. We hear countless testimonies every time, and it's really awesome to hear from you and to hear feedback. So please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and just share the message with all your friends and family. Until next time, keep believing and keep walking by faith. Love you lots. God bless you.